Just over a year ago, it was June 1st, 2017, DARPA announced $75 million in new funding for microelectronics research. We called that new investment the Electronics Resurgence Initiative, you've probably heard of it by now, uh, or the ERI. For $75 million, the goals were pretty ambitious. It was simply to help redefine the future of the microelectronics industry. Since then, we've been able to announce a much larger commitment of $1.5 billion over the next five years. The goals are the same. Uh, the challenge is just as large. Why do we think that we need to help redefine the future of the electronics industry? There are a lot of reasons. I'll give you two very simple ones. One is that transistor scaling will not last forever. Another is that much larger investments by other countries uh, in their manufacturing base threatens to destabilize market forces uh, and potentially our national infrastructure. We believe that invention and innovation are the right responses to those challenges. But the ERI is not just about money. And in fact, what I want to talk about today is primarily partnerships and relationships. DARPA has a long history of working with the commercial semiconductor industry to tackle hard problems. There have been a lot of notable successes. VLSI, MOSIS, RISC processors, 193 nanometer lithography, and the list goes on. But quite frankly, over the last decade or two, the relationship between the Department of Defense and the commercial semiconductor industry is not as strong as it used to be. And that's not anybody's fault. Technology has actually driven us down different paths. Technology has driven the commercial semiconductor industry towards more complexity, towards higher capital costs, higher design costs, and the kind of generalization and abstraction that are necessary uh, to uh, allow you to manufacture high volume products. So um, the, you know, these kinds of trends are simply not compatible with the specialization that is required for defense technologies. But there is hope, because I think that you'll hear over the next couple of days a number of different people saying in different ways that the future for the commercial semiconductor industry, the way that we will continue to make the same kind of progress that we've become used to is through specialization. Specialization will make better commercial technologies and will make better commercial products. And now we have an opportunity because that same technology and those same techniques that enable commercialization uh, of specialized technologies uh, now aligns with the specialization needs of the DOD. So uh, as we move forward, um, you know, we have been working on some of these partnerships uh, and working on some of the ways that we might work together. Let me give you a few examples. One is the JUMP program are the Joint University Microelectronics Program. Uh, and by the way, get used to hearing a lot of acronyms over the next couple of days. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, the JUMP program is really the techn technology foundation of the ERI. Uh, it is also the government's single largest investment in basic research. It's about $200 million over five years, spread across six university-led centers, and you'll hear more about those this afternoon. And it's not just where we can harvest next generation ideas and groundbreaking technologies, it's where we harvest the next generation of researchers, uh, scientists, and engineers to help make those technologies a reality. So it's a partnership uh, with 40% DARPA funding, 60% uh, from a consortium of uh, industry partners. It's really not just the research, but it is a great model for how industry government and academia can partner together to create technologies for the future. And in fact, we'll hear Dr. Erica Fuchs talk this afternoon about the role the government can play in innovation. I really look forward to hearing about that. But if the ERI, if the goals of the ERI are going to be possible, then this serves as a great foundation, but we need to do more. Because we also need to translate these technologies into commercial products that serve the industry and towards the kind of technologies that support the DoD. And we've been working at that as well. Let me give you a couple examples. One is the CHIPS program, uh, the Common Heterogeneous Integration and IP Reuse Strategies. CHIPS program you'll hear more about tomorrow, uh, but fundamentally it is about taking complex processors, or SOCs, and breaking them up physically 
into modular chiplets that can then be reassembled uh, with minimal impact on performance. The chips program, uh, if you think about where advanced packaging technologies are going for the industry, uh, 2.5D integration, for example, these are the kind of foundational technologies that are going to make commercial technologies better and make commercial products better. But they're also a great opportunity for the DoD because now we can leverage the best of what the commercial world has to offer and yet customize it for our needs. And to do this, we need those partnerships. This is an example of where the best EDA, manufacturing, uh, integration, uh, and defense space to define the requirements uh, and the needs for this technology for our applications can come together. Let me give you one more example. The craft program, circuit realization at faster timescales. The craft program has a goal of dramatically reducing the time and effort that it takes to design a complex processor or SOC. Of course, that's something that we can all get behind. Uh, industry bears the largest brunt of design costs, but it's also important for the DOD, typically has much smaller teams trying to tackle complex problems. The craft program, again, is also a great example of partnerships. It is an example of taking technologies created in academia and developed in academia, but partnering those teams with commercial partners who know how to bring those technologies uh, into commercial products, supported products uh, that can be used by a wide variety of people, but also partnering with our defense base to make sure that our defense partners are as good as anybody in the world at using these cutting edge tools. So we've been working at building these relationships and building these partnerships uh, and forming what we think of as ERI, which has this kind of structure. Jump is the foundation. The programs you just heard about and a lot of the programs you'll hear about over the next couple of days fall into one of three technology categories. We call materials integration, designs, and architectures. None of this matters unless they come together to create a new national electronics capability. For the ERI, the goal is the 2025 to 2030 timeframe. What is a national electronics capability? It is an innovative and dynamic uh, US-based industry and the ability for our defense partners to access and leverage those technologies. So that's the goal. And how did we get here? I mentioned the $75 million announcement about a year ago. Uh, once we did that, we held what we called the summer of listening. We held a lot of meetings. We held workshops. Uh, we went to conferences. We had a lot of conversations. And in September, we announced three new announcements covering six new programs. Those six new programs fall into the three uh, columns that uh, are shown here. And those new investments are what we call the page three investments. You'll hear more about the name tomorrow. Uh, but those page three investments uh, were what we announced in September. Uh, we received proposals a few months later. And I can say we were truly overwhelmed with the response that we got and overwhelmed in the best possible way. Uh, there was clearly a hunger to tackle new problems, uh, to explore new ideas, and to try to make change uh, for both defense and industry. We went through our normal competitive selection process, and now we get to the fun part. Because today I have the pleasure uh, of announcing those selections and announcing the teams that are gonna be doing this work. Before we do that, I uh, just wanna point out, you know, the, the point here is not looking back and how we got to this point. The point is to celebrate the beginning and to mark the beginning of a long journey uh, hopefully a successful and impactful journey. The teams that you'll see represented in just a few minutes uh, are the teams that are going to be developing these new concepts and these new ideas. It's gonna be a lot of work, and there will be some failures. It is truly our expectation that these technologies, though, will form the foundation uh, that let us help to redefine the future of the electronics industry. And I wanna point out one other thing. These are the page three investments. That is not all of ERI. This is not the end of the process. So I hope you are all you know, thinking about these technologies, how you can contribute, uh, and what we should be doing in the future.